And now for your weekly dose of metal. Here are your hosts, Morgan Danielle and Luco Blaze on the Metal Experience. All right, once again, we are the Metal Experience. I am Morgan Danielle with Webmaster Greg. That's somewhere wandering around here filming Greg things. Master. Greg Master, yeah, he's man. our metal superhero. <laughs> and uh, we opened the show with a couple awesome tracks, one being Grave Walker from our friends in Central Disorder. And Hell they are yeah. actually opening up uh, at Top Fuel Saloon on Friday and then Saturday at Penny Road Pub with our friends in Serpents for Mark Rizzo. So you can uh, grab tickets off the band or go to each website for Top Fuel Saloon or Penny Road Pub. 
and grab tickets. Go see Central Disorder. And the other song we heard was Somber by our friends in Arabella. And that is up on YouTube with an official music video. So, awesome. Well, we are down Luco Blaze tonight because he's super lame and decided he was playing hockey tonight. Man, fuck that guy and not, his hockey. Not his, not his fault, though. <laughs> that got scheduled out of his hands. So he will be back next week, but this week we'll keep you entertained. Greg and I are here. Don't worry. Hell we are yeah. hanging out with the first time on our show, the guys in, and it's one words, Metal Brook. Hello. <laughs> Thanks Hell for having yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for making the drive down. Not no problem. <laughs> Where'd you come from? We are out of Gurney, Illinois. Oh, okay, up north. Yeah, yep. up there. <laughs> Way up Thanks there. for being obvious, Greg. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There's other people that have no idea where Gurney is. So. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of Filipino fans, from what I understand. Oh. Is that Wisconsin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's up north, too. <laughs> It's all Chicago. So the guys <laughs> in Meadowbrook are on with us tonight. We've got plenty of music, some awesome stories to tell, and uh, you're in for a fun night. Ooh, Let's nanny. go uh, right into it. So go ahead and introduce yourselves, what you guys do in the band, and if you're missing anyone tonight. Well, I am Ryu. I am the lead vocalist. Um, oh, I guess let's go. Uh, my name is Kurt. I am the bassist for Meadowbrook. My name is Xavier. I'm the lead guitarist. I'm Coz. I play drums. <laughs> and this is everyone? We're not yep, missing this anyone? is everyone. Yep. Awesome. The whole band. Four piece. <laughs> yep. So let's go into the interesting story of how you guys all fell in love and started a band. Ooh, how did we fall in love? Uh, <laughs> do, you wanna, do you want to start that? Or yeah, should, uh, let's, uh, let's pass it over to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so me, oh man, where are you? Uh, you got to go way back <laughs> to the beginning. <laughs> in the way, way back. Oh uh, man, so when we first started this group, it was called uh, True Scent of Death. Oh, True man. scent. True scent of death. Okay. Ah, uh, man, how do I even get started with this? That's uh, a badass name. I know, right? Yeah, it does sound badass. So my buddy, he was, uh, he ate a lot of cheese <laughs> for a whole week, <laughs> and then nice. it took him a little bit. He's like, "Hey, I haven't shit in a little bit." I'm like, Something, <laughs> "Something's kind of going on here." So he uh, he goes to the doctor. Doctor puts a little pill up his butt. Wait, are you for serious? I'm so serious here. <laughs> so this is a very colorful story. Oh yeah, we're getting oh. real Dude, right I away. I haven't heard this version. Oh yeah, <laughs> you all know so, us. When you're on a metal experience, everything comes out. It's an out. exclusive. It's <laughs> literally, we did a literally video. and so figuratively. We, we did a video and we told this story, and yeah. you were there. How do you, you not remember tell, this? You, you did a video of, of this guy shitting out cheese. No, 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 no like a detail, but like I did yeah. not remember him having shit like up his ass oh yeah <laughs> oh so he God. shitting so bad and it came to him he's like yo this is the true scent of death right here <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and that is where the original name came from mm. and then uh a couple months later now long forgotten yeah long forgotten <laughs> uh -uh. and then uh so you kicked him out because he smelled so bad. Oh, yeah. It was the cheese. Okay. It was just <laughs> too much. Blue cheese, it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, that's where you went wrong. You went for the blue cheese. That's blue mold. Cheese. Yeah. That's the no-no cheese. Yeah. Gotta go for the Gouda. Yeah. There you go. That's a good choice. <laughs> oh, man. But no, uh, I think what well, after that, uh, Van started leaving left and right. And then I think you discovered Ryu. Hello. <laughs> and guys uh, um, started doing like you know band stuff like making music and stuff like that but it was like with a few other people and then they also left and yeah so when I <clears throat> I was actually going to, uh, to to college at the time the college of Lake County and uh, one of our, our mutual friends um, he he came up to me one day and he's like hey you know I, I've heard you sing before you sound really good you know, my friend has a band and he's looking for a vocalist. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, dope. So, you know, I met with X and I auditioned. And, you know, from from there, you know, we just we just started working with each other. So when I came on to the band, it was myself, uh, X, our friend Eliu. And then for a very, very short amount of time was my girlfriend at the time, um, Tierra. And then, unfortunately you know, due to time constraints and, you know, the other two couldn't really show up to practice, we decided, all right, well, you know, let's just let's just do this you and me and we'll 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 go from there. Mm. You know? And that's 
pretty much where Tycho came up to me. Uh, Elliot, sorry. We have a nickname for the guy. But all he came. Names. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 trying hard to, like, to use real names. It's trying, like, mm. you know, all the years to use the nicknames, it kind of just stick there. But uh, <laughs> he went up to me and uh, told me about the same thing, you know, with Rio, uh, saying, like, uh, hey, there's this guy that wants to start a band. And since you play bass, you'd be perfect for it. And I think I met X at his house, actually. Yeah, was we're, like that a barbecue or something? Yeah, we were trying to do a, a uh, what was the instrumental of a Metallica song. No, it was um, Metalocalypse. No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure it was the... Uh, Metalocalypse. <laughs> no, that was the other guy. <laughs> you guys learned Orion at one point. Yeah, that yeah. was it. It was Orion. Mm-hmm. But we couldn't do it because we were getting bitten up by mosquitoes. So we just, yeah, we just gave up. <laughs> but that's when um, me and him clicked at that point and felt like, yeah, all right, all right, cool, we can do this. And then a few a couple of years later, we started making songs and then um, pretty much just put our ideas into, you know, into this whole metal book so thing. So what, what year was this? Oh, oh, year was this? Man, maybe <clears throat> I... 2010? Yeah, I joined the band right around 2010 because I remember, I think I was in my freshman, sophomore year of college. That sounds about right, yeah. You know, yeah. and then fast forward a couple years later and, you know, through multiple lineup changes and then multiple uh, <laughs> <laughs> stories. <laughs> oh, man. But no, uh, now, you know, now that I think about it, you should tell them how True Scent of Death became Metalbrook. So it started with uh, that 70s show Circle. <laughs> After a couple rounds, it's like, hey, man, your last name is Middlebrook, right? You should name your band Metalbrook. And I was like, no, nah, that's stupid. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sober up, I wake up, and I was like, hey, that's fucking brilliant. Dude. <laughs> and lo and behold, that's yeah. where we are right now. Yeah. So you're yeah. Fez. I'm Fez. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'd like to point out that I have not heard this version of the story. What? I'm sure and, I've heard And the end table is, is oh, Fez. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty I'm much. Fez. Who's Foreman? <laughs> and who's Hyde? Honestly, I would have to say Coase is probably the Foreman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I would think you're more Hyde than anybody else because you're <laughs> like super chill. Foreman? Uh, cause your dad's know. kind of a hard ass. I'm not gonna lie. That's, that's true. That's, mm. that's not a good reason why. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Red is the hard ass. That's why you would be. Wait, no. Actually, I think Ryu would probably be foreman because actually, compared yeah, to yeah, his dad and your, you know dad, what? That makes sense. I'd probably yeah. be foreman because <laughs> my dad, my dad is uh, um, very uh, uh, traditional, old school Mexican. He's a, he's kind of he's kind of a kind of a hard guy. Doesn't really talk all that much you know and he, he kind of he's gotten he's gotten so old to the point where he's down to like like grunts and like very very distinctive like <laughs> neck and body movements it's really oh, yeah, it's really network <laughs> i saw him dance <laughs> through the neck oh god your father has a <laughs> neck of a pigeon i'm just gonna tell you that huh. right now <laughs> it's like how do you do that <laughs> <laughs> i think i would be like the kelso honestly yeah 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 for sure yeah for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. i have to put myself in there honestly <laughs> All right, so we're missing how we found the last member of the lineup. That's true. Yes, I'm so sorry, Coz. I forgot <laughs> you were there. Right. No, um, uh, I'm used to it. So, <laughs> so uh, for uh, for the longest time, it was just the three of us. It was it was me, X, and and Kurt. Um, and then I was dating a different girl at the time, and you know she was she was real supportive of the band. And she noticed that we didn't have a drummer, so she's like, "Hey, I know this guy who who, who can drum." <laughs> you don't have a drummer. Oh, we didn't have a drummer point. for the longest time. Yeah. Oh, I just man, noticed you're missing time. a massive drum kit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, oh, what, what was the, like the shows you usually do? Like, we, it was like, oh, in, like man. backyards so, man, at, at your apartment. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it was just like, yeah. gotta make it work. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. we did a we did a, a a garage show for my birthday one year, so that was that was pretty fun. We yeah. were. We were vastly inexperienced with yep. really shitty equipment, but we made it. We made it work. <laughs> <laughs> We've so, grown, mm-hmm. but but no. Um, <laughs> so my girlfriend, <laughs> nice. Right, yeah. So my girlfriend at the time, she she you know suggested that we get in contact with this guy Zach, who could play drums, right? So I got in con. <laughs> so I got in contact with him, you know. After going back and forth a little bit, we met up, and you know he. I, it turns out he didn't actually have a kit that he could use. <laughs> yeah, he was he was using Coz's kit. So when when we he, when we first met, he Coz, hit me up and he was just like, "Hey, I'm auditioning for this band, Metalbrook. Can I use your drum set?" <laughs> and I was just like, "Okay, sure." 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, Zach Zach was still in in uh, a well, whole bunch of like other stuff at that time. Well, honestly, yeah. well, not 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 that. I'm. But he was mm. he was he was with you with uh, when you guys were doing. Yeah, um, we were uh, we were in him and I were in projects together for uh, for a couple years before uh, oh, yeah, he uh, yeah, yeah. he was contacted by uh, your girlfriend at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the funny thing about that is that. Your girlfriend at the time actually used to date one of the members from one of my past projects, and she's been over to one of our practices, and she knows that I'm a drummer, but she recommended Zach and not me. I always thought that was weird, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, also, she's a dumb hoe. Come on, bro. We know we know who the dumb hoe is, but it's it's definitely not it's definitely not that one. Anyway, uh. so. We did a couple practices, and then at one point we picked up a uh, a rhythm guitarist, um, and we were all trying to kind of fit into this like really small shed. It was it was a lot more packed than it is now. Mm. And uh, after a while, we, we we decided that our our rhythm guy wasn't going to work because he wasn't quite as um, skilled as X was, because X has a very distinct style of playing, and unfortunately, our our, our buddy. You know who was our rhythm? He he can really keep up, so we had to kind of say goodbye to him. He was he was real cool about it. Plus mm-hmm. the like personal stuff that he was going through. And yeah. yeah. So then at you got him a cup of coffee. Yeah, we did get him a cup of coffee. Oh, tweaked. we're talking about that guy. Yeah, I thought we were still on Zach. <laughs> no, <laughs> old guy. We'll, we'll get to Zach. We'll get to Zach. <laughs> oh God, there that was horrible. This whole was scary. Pod- <laughs> what kind of coffee did he drink? It, it was, was just, just straight coffee. It was regular coffee. coffee. Stupid potent. Oh God. <laughs> I don't like, think. I don't he, think he'd ever had coffee before because when we gave it to him, like maybe twenty minutes later, he was he was like tweaking. He's like, like, I need to run. Like, <laughs> let's go. And then when we were gonna go drop him off, he, you know, we were gonna drop him off at his place, and he's like, "Oh, just let me off right here." I'm like, "Dude, are you sure? It's like ten o'clock at night, right? And, like, you're a little guy, like, right? Mm. <laughs> no." So, um, so we had we had five in our lineup, right? And Zach switched from drums to rhythm guitar because he sucks at drums. And Coz became our, our permanent drummer, you know, which was a good choice, which was the best choice, yeah. honestly, because mm. my original place in the band was the keyboard player. <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> we were trying to make you, everybody fit at, mm. at the moment. You guys didn't want to make uh, executive decisions because yeah. mm. unfortunately, that's kind of a part of being in the band. It's uh, it's about like uh, doing things that benefit the band and not so much as like keeping your friends together. Like sometimes you just have to make sacrifices like that. It's yeah. it's a uh, it's a hard thing, but mm-hmm. you know it's. That's just the way things go it's sometimes. Just good business. It's just good business. Yeah. yeah. Over it's over sad. time, we've we've definitely become better at at making those <clears throat> executive decisions and and not not you know worrying so much about people's feelings, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Fuck so their so feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but they matter I mean, too. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's um much better to uh kind of be straight up with your friends like that because it's like if you don't you don't want to keep uh, a member in your band who just because they're your good friends but they can't keep up with your music yeah because then yeah. feelings fester over time you think that like this member isn't pulling their own weight and it's it just it becomes something that uh it, that you don't want it to become oh yeah, yeah. i mean, definitely learned that yeah mm-hmm. i think we all have <laughs> yeah honestly so, he was he was when we asked him to leave he was real cool with it. i mean obviously he was he was a little bit hurt by it but mm-hmm. once we explained it to him he was he was all right yeah mm-hmm. so all together with this lineup this how is our, long this is our permanent how lineup. long has it been this lineup Man. 2015 2015 so four years four years yeah. Man, years mm-hmm. just go by i totally I forgot yeah for <laughs> real jeez mm. <laughs> it, it honestly oh doesn't feel God. that that long ago mm-hmm. you know that we were no. all trying to like we were we were kind of feeling each other out and you know seeing what would work and what wouldn't you know trying you know different things with you know two separate projects because we, we had Meadowbrook and then we had you know Coza's side project which we tried to integrate into our stuff you know but yeah, I think we did. I think mm-hmm. Coz mm-hmm. ultimately made the decision to kind of you know break off from that yeah that yeah. um. I don't know, as as much as uh, those old songs, I like those old songs. It's like they're they're not Metalbrook material. Yeah, and so that's that's just the way things are. The music that you brought tonight, the the album is Darkness is dot yes. dot dot. Um, when did yeah, you dot, dot, record dot. this? Last year. Yeah. Awesome. August. Yeah, last year, yeah. Well, we released it August of 2018. Yep. We had a we had a so. release show and everything. It was great. Oh yeah, people were loving it. You know, getting along with it. Just feel honestly, it, it felt happy. Just had. Hearing people sing like you know one of our songs, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's open up the show and, and introduce the the world to Metalbrook. Um, 
the first two tracks that you guys want to feature tonight, what are Ooh. the first tracks you want to have our listeners hear? Ooh. Immortal and Soldiers? I was going to say Immortal, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be Immortal. Immortal. All right. And Soldiers. <laughs> we... So, Immortal and Soldiers? We are Immortal. We are Immortal and we are the Soldiers. Awesome. And then we'll talk about those when we come back in. Here are the first two tracks from Metalbrook.
What's going on? I'm Morgan Danielle. I'm Luca Blaze from the Metal Experience in Chicago, Illinois. And you're listening to Small Town Mentality Podcast with your host, Ben in Austin. This is God. This is Trent. This is Tim. And we're Heavy! And you are listening to the Metal Experience Radio Show. Super Show Extravaganza live on... What the fuck? Network. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Did you edit that? Woo! We just heard We Are Immortal and We Are the Soldiers. Hell beautiful. yeah. <laughs> We're soldiers now. Damn right. <laughs> what brought on inspiration for the soldier song? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's all you, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one with the yeah. lyrics. <laughs> so, um, uh, to be completely honest with you, I. Yes, don't completely really honest. I don't want any lies. <laughs> don't lie to us. <laughs> to be honest know. with you, I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, We Are Immortal was conceived by this idea that. You know, every every band has a legacy that they leave behind. You know, every band has that one song that everybody can vibe to, everybody connects with, you know, and everybody just loves and they know all the words to the song. And, you know, we as a band, you know, we, we, we strive to, to create that feeling of, of belonging, that feeling of, of, you know, being included, you know. And then not only that, but we as a band want to leave our mark. We want to leave our legacy you know, on this world before we depart it. So We Are Immortal kind of <clears throat> talks about that, you know, throughout the entirety of the song. It's just, uh, you know, just the line in, in, in the chorus, you know, we are immortal, you know, the preceding line is, you know, and by our legacy, we are immortal. You know, that's that's kind of what we hope to, to, you know, get the message across. It's like no matter, you know, where we go, no matter what happens to us, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, you know, this is our legacy, you know, and so long as people have that, that, that legacy in their hearts, we will essentially be immortal, you know. But on, on the other hand, this song is not just for us, you know. It's not just our anthem. It's our fans' anthem, you know, because like I said, holding on to that legacy, it, 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 you know, in your heart, you know, as you, as you go through life, you know, that's, it makes you immortal as well because you hold on to that, you know. So that's, that's that song. And then... For We Are the Soldiers, We Are the Soldiers was written kind of on a similar concept. Um, it talks more about soldiers as, as kind of a metaphor. You know, it, it, it talks about soldiers, you know, overseas, like fighting, you know, in the military, and everybody's risking their lives to, to protect what they, what they care about the most, you know. But it also talks about the soldiers here at home, you know, not necessarily in the military, but just in, in each and every one of us. We're, each of us is, is fighting our own battle, you know, whether, whether it's, it's visible or not. You know, everybody is dealing with something. Everybody's fighting against something, you know, whether it's, you know, like, like personal problems, you know, uh, mental issues or, or family problems or what have you, you know, but just, just the fact that, that you wake up every day, you know, and you choose to fight, against that against all odds even against yourself you know that that in turn makes you a soldier so this this song is not just for like 
our, our military and, and military across the world, but it's also for the soldiers here at home. So it's, it's another one of those songs that, that we want people to be able to vibe with, you know, and, and connect with. Where did you guys... Yeah. Oh, you had more to go off that? No, no, I'm oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was um, <laughs> Where was Darkness Is recorded at? His uh, house. <laughs> self-produced. Self-produced. Yep. Yep. A lot of money went into it. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. we're we're. But that, but that means not much as much money is going to go into the next album. Oh yeah. True. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So being a self-produced album, how long was the process for recording? <sighs> oh geez, that was. So many mixing boards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going just like three. going through mixing consoles, finding the right one. Finally, yeah. found the right one, and even then, like just uh, getting a grasp on the mixing process is hard. It's like uh, I don't know. I've, <coughs> I've recorded and I've experimented with uh, music uh, practically, you know, my whole life. But it's just like it's uh, it's really hard working with uh, an actual console and getting uh, you know an actual DAW. You know, like working with Ableton or Cubase or whatever. It's like mu- mixing is a whole different art in and of itself. Mm. It's it's practically as difficult <laughs> as it is Cubase. to actually actually play one of the instruments in the band it's mm-hmm. just a lot to take in and uh yeah it, yeah, it was it was it was a journey yeah it, it was, was it yeah. was a journey it was basically but, like uh we were like as we we're like getting all this stuff together we were still like learning steps and procedures and like uh what can make into a good album and stuff like that because uh <clears throat> like a lot of times they were just like how do we make the instrument sound louder how do we have uh, the drums not bleed into everything else and it was just like learning stuff so just like baby steps continue going on and on and on until now we're actually like okay we still got what we're looking for basically the most important lesson about mixing is distortion sucks <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry it, uh, <laughs> i mean you're not the only culprit in the band who uses mm. distortion yeah, how yeah. You doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hello our bass player uh, <laughs> no do you play your pedal or you play your but no nah, like uh it, it was definitely a worthwhile adventure because like i always like to think of it as uh, you know like creativity is all about risk and it's like you always got to try hard and you always got to put yourself out there mm-hmm. and if you don't try and you put out garbage and you get made fun of for it you know that's just the way it goes but mm. if you actually try hard and you put out something presentable that you can be proud of even if you don't make it that's yeah. still experience for your next endeavor mm-hmm. sure you're right mm-hmm. definitely proud of what what we put out you know with with all, all all the grueling months of of learning the the learning the programs learning the the how to work the mixing board and it, it, it all it all came together so beautifully and and really you know the rest of us have our you know sound engineer over here Coz, because <laughs> you know with his with his musical background like we we really left everything in his hands and and he just you know he he gave us something so great that we can all be so proud of so definitely no you guys are too much <laughs> <laughs> so your writing process how does that usually work amongst you uh, well, I guess that's, these uh, two guys <laughs> the guitarist and the lead singer honestly it's writing is it's different. It's like for me personally, I, I just vibe off of everything, like emotions, what I listen to, just what's going on in life. And I think what darkness is, like me and Ryu, we definitely came together and just really vibed off each other. Like what we were feeling in the moment, you know, breakups, being sad, angry, just that kind of helped uh, really write the, write the music, write the first album. It's like we had the first album written way before you know jeremiah came into the band it was i don't know it just kind of clicked and then even now like we're still being creative we're still writing you know differently maybe we're not so angry all the time but i'm jeremiah by the way (laughs) (laughs) i'm sorry okay we never go around with nicknames we never introduced me as that but let's do that just just for clarification keep going my name is xavier i go by x my name is mike i go by ryu Yes, like Street Fighter Ryu. <laughs> um, I I just gonna say Kurt. That's it. <laughs> he goes by Kratos. He doesn't like admitting it. Uh, I yeah. am. That's a badass name. Come I on. I don't man. like it. You do realize you do realize that that Kredo in Spanish means creed. Uh, creed. Anyway, and you were saying X. And then what's your nickname? Oh, uh, I'm I'm Jeremiah. I go by Coz. Yeah. His Coz. last name is Cozer, so we kind of shorten yeah. that. Took it, down. it was almost like a christening when he when he and Zach joined the band. They they kind of. We kind of gave them their own nicknames, mm-hmm. but no, like like X was saying, um, in the beginning, after um, 
after our friend Tycho and and my my ex Tara left the band, um, X and I we 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 really like buckled down and and almost every other practice we were we were writing new material, mm-hmm. you know, and we just we just had this 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 vibe going, you know, like he would play something random, you know, just just kind of like play it faster, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like play it faster, throw some chugs in there, do it again, <laughs> and then he would and he would just go off, mm-hmm. and I would sit there and I would write lyrics depending on how the uh the riff sounded and and from that we we had like a whole album's worth of material it was so crazy like our chemistry is just like it's crazy how it just works out you know like i do something you're like hey you know do it again or do it backwards and it's just bam there's a song right there yep (laughs) so what was the first song that you guys wrote who lived my darker self no no i think it's carry on well our first song that we ever wrote it actually hasn't been released yet Broken oh, Outcast. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that thing that has exclusive. Been <laughs> 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 so cough, cough. Chum, the, chum. the very, very first song that we wrote um, is a song called Broken Outcast. And by God, has Oof. it gone through so many revamps. So many. Mm-hmm. It, it used to have this real punk pop feel to yeah, it. It had like a Green Day kind of vibe yeah. to it. Mm. And then we, we came back to it after putting it on the shelf for, for a while. And we, we tried playing it. And we we're like, no, this is, this is dumb. Let's, let's go back. <laughs> I know like. I know like. Let's go back and fix this shit. Mm-hmm. So we, we did. And we revamped it. And then we shelved it. And we came back a little while later, and we revamped it again. It was like and four we show- times we revamped it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You're so. alive. You're dead. You're alive. You're dead. <laughs> Pretty much. That song. It's like buff, nerf, buff, we eventually, nerf. Buff, nerf. <laughs> eventually played it live. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we and did, actually. Yeah. yeah, we did, yeah. The, mm-hmm. the, one, the version that we played, pretty sure, is the final version. Yes, yeah. of the mm-hmm. song. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it got a really good response, and, and I was a little bit nervous because it's – the song itself is is different than what you hear on Darkness is. Darkness is has a very what's the word? Uh, the 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 types of metal featured on that album are very different. Each song has kind of its own genre, you mm. know. And and that that was simply because we you know, we were we were more or less experimenting with our own sound. Yeah, we're we're learning, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when when we came back to Broken Outcast. You know, we played it and we finalized it. We we, we decided, hmm, this this doesn't this isn't really gonna fit anywhere in the album. So let's you know let's put it away and save it for something else. So, but yeah, that was the very first song we wrote was Broken mm-hmm. Outcast. Mm-hmm. So your first song that you guys said that was released on this album that you wrote together was Carry On. Ooh, no. I think it was Live, wasn't it? Yeah, actually, well, it we was. You didn't write Live. That's an interesting story in itself, too. Oh um, yeah, Liv. story time, kids. Oh, another one. <laughs> <laughs> so many stories. We got yeah, all the yeah, stories. We're, we're very, we're very uh, a storied band. No, um, <laughs> so I'll light back. the fire and uh, <laughs> get the, you know, marshmallows. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, I can get down some s'mores. Mm-hmm. No, like um, so <laughs> Live My Darker <laughs> Self is the what sixth track I think. Oh yeah, something, something like, that. like that. Yeah. yeah. And live my darker Check self wasn't five. Yeah. Don't number five. Us. So live my darker self wasn't actually live my darker self is the only song that wasn't strictly written by X and myself. Live my darker self was written by our um, original bassist Tycho, um, and his his lyrical content was very. Mm, Moody. Moody. Yeah. yeah. Like dark. <laughs> it was very dark. I he can fill the blank sniff for you. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So so he gave me the lyrics and he's like, here, let's turn this into a song. And I read through it. I'm like, oh, this is this is the shit. You know, and I, I kind of rewrote some stuff here and there just to kind of fit in with what X was was bringing to the table in terms of like, you know, riff, riffs and stuff. Yeah, that song. I don't know. Like it, it connected to me. Like his lyrics were really dark, but I don't know. I just was really able to connect with it. And then. From that, we were actually to make that song into a trilogy in itself. Yeah. So the the trilogy being um, "Live My Darker Self" is the first part of the trilogy, <coughs> and uh, "My Dusk," which is the very last song on the track. <coughs> on the sorry, album. I got a fart in my throat. Yeah, yeah. And the trilogy, um, based off the lyrical content of the very first song. The, the trilogy consists of a journey, a journey through darkness, so to speak, because, I mean, darkness is awesome. <laughs> yeah, the, the darkness is dark, dark, dark. The darkness. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So Live My Darker Self kind of 
introduces us to this this character this this uh um i think disembodied disembodied would be the right word just you know more or less a, a character comes into play where you know throughout the entirety of the song he's kind of faced with these choices like you know what do i do do i take this path of light you know and be you know a good person and and be righteous and and you know do the right thing or do i take this path of darkness and and become this this being of evil and and make all the wrong choices and you know live my darker self is kind of that that you know unsure tone you know and and i don't know which path i'm going to take and then my dusk being the second of the, in the trilogy talks about you know the character takes the path of darkness so now he's taken the path of darkness and and the entirety of the song kind of uh riffs off of the first song live my darker self you know and it explains that you know i have taken this path you know i I am doing these things i am becoming this person you know but deep down i'm still like i'm still looking for the answer you know which would be in part three which is still in you know writing very 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 early stages of the writing process i'm uh, undecided (laughs) (laughs) let's play another twofer uh because we got a lot of music the darkness is is a total of 10 tracks and we definitely want to feature all of them tonight Mm -hmm. uh what are the next two that you want to play i would prelude and live Oh. Prelude yeah. and live my darker live self. My okay. darker self. Brando. Sounds great. Another two tracks from Metalbrook here. <laughs> it's not that kind of prelude. <laughs> it's not that kind of prelude. <laughs> Greg just made it that way. It's a, it's uh, a, here you it's go. Okay, he's hyping it up. Mm.
solitude Confusion I left behind This world that I left behind Your love I left behind Live my darker self
Well, hi there. Hello. We know you're enjoying your current dose of metal with the people at the Metal Experience. What are their names, right? Hey, Morgan and Luco. How you doing? Well, howdy. Should you get through with your dosage with them and find yourself still wanting metal, come see us at the Epitome of Stupidity Podcast. You can find us on Podbean, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, and other places, I'm sure. Yeah, and it's cool. It's a cool show, I must say. Until then, back to these guys. Bye-bye. I'm Meredith. I'm Ryan. And I'm John. And we are Victims. And you're listening to the Metal Experience. Check out our full length album, Volume 2 Inside the Mind, available everywhere. Yeah. Metallica, very strong Metallica background. Um, but now that I've grown, I listen to everything. Like, I don't even know. Just there was a lot of metalcore bands that you introduced me to. Uh, what, Escape the Fates? As I Lay Dying. As I Lay Dying, oh yeah, definitely them. Yeah. Well, As I Lay Dying was Christian until you... They were, Tim's and that's what really inspired me too. It's ultimatum. like how God <laughs> influenced like metal, you know? It's, it's crazy. But he told me to kill her. <laughs> God I mean. told me to kill this one. <laughs> Tim was on some other shit, man. Yeah, Tim was. Oh, but I mean, they're back now. Yeah, yeah and they're killing yeah. it again. Oh, oh so yeah. good. My own in a good way, is though. A in a good way. Banger. Yeah. Like, I love my own. Grade. So, how do your parents feel? About you being in a band and the music you're listening to now. Yeah, happy being big that rock I'm not star. in jail. You know, <laughs> good. Whoa, all the clipping, all the clipping. Sorry. That's so funny. <laughs> They're proud of what I'm making, so I'm. That's good. I continue to please them. Yes, they are supportive. <laughs> um, my yeah. turn now. Whoever wants to talk, oh, whoever. Mm. I'm not uh, naming names. Down the road. I guess I'll just uh, I'll start with my influences. So my inf- a lot, pretty much all of my influences came from this guy to my right. Mm-hmm. He, he, I, I was a very uh, all around music kind of kid, you know. Because growing up, I listened, I listened to everything. Because my mom would would put on like oldies and you know all these all these old people's <laughs> sta- uh, stations. So uh, that's what I grew up listening to. And then I, when, once I got into like high school and stuff, I started listening to more like rock and new metal, very heavy Linkin Park fan, you know. And then I would listen to like alternative rock bands like 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 Brinky Benjamin and all this other stuff. So that was kind of my that was kind of my shtick for a little while. And then, you know, when I met this guy, you know, I uh I had this this predisposed I guess idea of what I wanted my vocals to sound like and what I wanted the music to sound like, you know. But then he, you know, once I heard his guitar work and he, and he showed me some of his influences, I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty dope. Like I I could I could definitely get into this. So a lot of my 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 influences for Darkness is came from bands like As I Lay Dying, um, All That hey, Remains, yeah. a lot of a lot mm-hmm. of metalcore bands. Uh, Bullet from a Valentine yeah, was a Bullet, big yeah. one. It mm-hmm. was a big one. Um, who else? Like he said, escape the fade. There was bless the fall. Oh, just yeah. a lot, fall. a lot of great, great mm-hmm. you know bands to to really introduce someone into the metal genre. So I really tried to to kind of incorporate that metalcore feel into you know the lyrics and the music. Um, and as far as my parents are concerned, um, yeah, how are they? <laughs> yeah, well, first and foremost, they're my parents disappointed. Are <laughs> My uh, my mom, my mom, you know, God bless her. She's 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 always been really supportive of me. Anytime I go to see her, she's like, "Oh, how's your band doing?" You know, she she's, 
the thing is, she still thinks we're a rock band, which... <laughs> You've never shown her? Uh, no. Ooh, yeah, no, that's a no-no. That's a no-no. That's oh, a no-no. Oh, man, no. do I have something to tell you? <laughs> I don't think that she would mind this. We've got some nice songs. I, I think that nice it's, there's, there's worse things you can show her. Very yeah. true. You can show uh, her Greg's cradle vocals. <laughs> So no one can hear you, yeah. Greg. You're not on a microphone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, to be honest, I've never really thought about like like legitimately showing her. I, I guess I could, but I, you know, considering the music that she grew up with, you know, she'd probably just think it was really loud and a lot of noise, and she'd ask questions like, "Why are you screaming like that?" Like, <laughs> I was gonna say the Mom. same thing. <laughs> It's passion. No. Um, but no, my mom has been my mom has been very, very supportive. Uh, my dad, on the other hand, um, when I started with Metalbrook and, you know, just just how passionate I was to be a part of it and how I devoted like every waking moment into to writing music and playing music. My dad was was very skeptical. You know, my, my dad's a realist. You know, and and his thing, his whole thing was, it's it's like it's like, uh, Mike, it's nice to have drink. I'm I'm gonna imitate my dad here for a few oh seconds. Boy. Spot on. <laughs> right. And and he would tell me, he's like, Mike, it's nice to have dreams, but you you need to do something that you can fall back. I'm like, all right, pop. And <laughs> for like years, for years, on. that's how. <laughs> yeah, these guys always crack up whenever I imitate my dad. But no, for years, my you know my dad's thing was 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 you know, that I don't know what I'm doing and it's just dreams and, you know, I don't even know how to read music. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that and this and that. It's just, just negativity, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I love my dad, but his his realist point of view and my optimist point of view never really met, you know, eye to eye, you know, always conflicting ideals. So for that for me, uh, being a part of Metalbrook, it's, it's really a driving force for me because, you know, it's true what they say that the best revenge you can get on someone is to prove them wrong. And, you know, a lot of why I put so much passion and so much effort into the band is to, you know, make it and, and make something of, of what, you know, we have and, you know, to prove my dad wrong, you know, to show him like, hey, I did this, you know. Have you I, ever showed him your music? No. <laughs> <laughs> he would I, I just like my mom, that. he would he would just think it's it's noise and we don't know what the hell we're doing. But if you really if you really mm-hmm. if we were to put on paper like just you know, every note of every song, like you would you'd be looking at probably a scribbled mess. Mm-hmm. You know, but to <laughs> us it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So uh I think mine's a bit of mixture of uh X's, honestly. Uh I never really uh, growing up with metal, actually, I was uh, with a black family. We were mostly listening to nothing but R and B, slow mm-hmm. jazz, Temptations, Michael Jackson, mostly Michael Jackson. Yeah, honestly. Michael Jackson. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> love me to Michael Jackson, honestly. But uh, I think uh, mm-hmm. the first experience of I don't know how could I I want to say they were metal, but um, I think what was the band called? Uh, Ten Years. I think they were kind of like. Yeah. I, I would say they were like metal. I think it was like kind of like a first like baby step into metal, and then I started slowly getting into like other bands like uh, System of a Down, and yeah, then yeah. Corn, Corn mostly, Korn. yeah, Mudvayne. Uh, <laughs> I was I would say mostly just because of a lot of like video games. Honestly, a lot of like video games I play are mostly like uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, where it has like a big mixture of like you know you got hip hop, you got. Um, metal you got rock and stuff like that i think that was the reason why i got start into like the whole metal stuff i wasn't like really like um uh what's the word uh restricted to listen to metal i think my folks were really kind of open to it but i had to be like kind of careful with it that's why i was like i think the first album i bought was a 10 years album i forgot what it was it's called wasteland i think and i showed it to them and Honestly, it, it didn't look too bad. It just like it was a picture of a bird. <laughs> so I was like, all right, fine, we'll buy it. And um, I started listening to it, and then I was like, oh, so this is rock music. So I started like, honestly, before when I was little, I was like dressing completely different. I would be like wearing like Adidas, fucking uh, shit, Trip like pants. Uh, no, no. I, when I was like little, I was usually wearing like baggy oh. pants. Like I was mostly just like a hip hop person. But then when I started getting into metal, I'm started dressing like more into like. Black, blue jeans, like vests, stuff that we're wearing basically right now. And um, I think when I got joined with these guys, uh, he, X showed me uh, Metallica. And then that just went into like a whole nother like 
doorway into other yeah. stuff like metalcore, doom metal, death metal, like all the stuff that yeah. I did not think that was like. We so always say metal is a gateway metal. drug. It, it, is. <laughs> it pretty much is, honestly. Um, mm. the, honestly, the most like thrash metal band I really do like was probably like Anthrax when I was like when I first got into like yeah, uh, yeah. Metallica, mm -hmm. just because oh, Anthrax yeah. was just. Oh yeah, Anthrax mm -hmm. was just like a more like fitting home for me, just because like their power, their like aggression, just just it hits me, and I just like I can't stop, but just to like headbang or start doing something because it just gives me just a big yeah. mo like a motivation, honestly. Mm -hmm. Actually, bought one of their albums really, and then there's also <laughs> Mega Death and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like same thing with uh, with uh, Ryu and X. Like uh, it would start from Metallica into like metalcore and then all stuff like that. Most like metalcore I listen to right now are like. Um, Kill Switch, Parkway Drive. Ah, uh, there's another one that's escaping me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ice oh, Nine good. Kills. Ice Nine Kills. Is yeah, Ice Nine Kills <laughs> definitely. All right, that was the one. And then uh, yeah, and also progressive metal like pro uh, prog metal, mostly due to you know, uh, our drummer because he's really into like uh, progressive metal, and he's also into other things too, not just progressive metal, but like death metal and stuff like that. Um, that's basically what I'm listening to now. So it was kind of like learning this new world. And as for my folks knowing about um, me doing a band, I actually show my mom one of our songs. <laughs> How did that go? I was terrified at first. I'm not going to lie. I, oh, I don't know what song I would. Oh, I feel I was kind of be like, a, I don't know. I was kind of a jokester a little bit at times because my dad was a jokester. I was going to like let her listen to On the Road Ahead wow. first. <laughs> a really bad start, honestly. But I decided to just puss out on that one and just went to it with uh immortal mm. at first she was okay with it but then when she wanted to listen to more uh, i forgot mm. that it was on the road ahead that was the next one whoops <laughs> so she was really just like at first she was like oh wow this looks like you know this nice you know like i don't like the screaming is not my cup of tea which I can understand, you know, like, uh, once again, you know, folks. That's and, how it is with most parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, there's some that are, like, open to it, but then, you know, there's, like, ours who are just like, why are you screaming? <laughs> 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 it's just, it's the emotion, it's the oh, feel. Yeah. <laughs> and um, at first she was okay with it, but then when she heard uh, On the Road Ahead, she thought that I was in a satanic band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we let you write that song. <laughs> <laughs> satanic band. Yeah, uh, that was a really bad uh, experience. But now she's still supportive. Like, she do sees me, like, go off every Thursdays when we have practice. And she's like, oh, have fun at band practice. And I'm like, I will. I won't yeah. go to jail. <laughs> 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 no, not ever. Um, uh, I Honestly, I think it's, like, trying to, like, bring the band into my family mostly. I think my sister actually went to one of our shows, actually. It was at the uh, Swing State, actually. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, it was that was like a long time ago. Honestly. Where's that at? Uh it was nowhere. Lake Villa? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the the cutoff between Lake Villa and Gurney. Yeah. yeah. But now it's like oh, a okay. car dealership now. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But no, um now uh they're really are supportive. Uh and yeah, basically that's it. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I guess it's my turn. Uh I guess um I don't know, in my younger days I was more into playing video games. I didn't really care that much about music. It's like I just wanted to play and I wanted to design video games and basically all I really knew from music was uh, I had this uh, piano that uh, my parents bought me that had classical pieces on it. And I used to listen to classical a lot and I used to listen to a lot of video game music. The first metal yeah. band that I listened to was Dragon Force. And that actually really got me into heavy metal because I was just amazed at how like fast those guys played their instruments. And so, you know... Uh, one thing led to another, you know, Metallica, Sevenfold, eventually got to Dream Theater, listened to more metalcore bands, listened to Bullet, uh, Breaking Benjamin, uh, All That Remains, uh, got into Black Dahlia Murder a bit, had a death metal phase, mm -hmm. uh, came back to Dream Theater, and has, and that's, uh, I, I listened to a lot of Dream Theater, a lot of Dream Theater, a lot of Symphony X, I basically became a, a prog guy from, uh, from that moment on. Getting in all these all these really good prog bands, you know, get uh, between the Buried and Me periphery. And that's um, pretty much the music that uh, has really been inspiring me lately. Definitely, with Darknesses was mostly a sevenfold Dream Theater uh, uh, vibe. I was kind of going with for that album, trying to put my own uh, spin on things, doing things uh, like uh, man, just thinking like 
how would these guys do it? <coughs> you know, mm-hmm. just... And um, as far as my parents go, they don't disapprove of the music. They don't uh, come to any of our shows, and they prefer my solo stuff <laughs> over my band stuff. So I'm pretty sure your dad show like show up to one of our shows, right? No, no, mm-hmm. not that I remember. Hmm. Oh, oh well. <laughs> when when you and I played in another band together, my dad was there. Oh yeah, never mind. He was he was never around for Metalbrook show though. Gotcha. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't we have enough fans to fill the slots yeah. <laughs> well you mentioned uh a song that your mom thought was a oh, satanic no. band oh yeah let's play uh, that one on the road oh. again <gasps> on the road, road ahead. ahead my bad <laughs> so let's play uh that along with another song so oh no <laughs> on the road ahead will be one and then what is let's play the struggle right the after struggle? that no oh, yeah <laughs> let's do it yes <laughs> Just okay. just no, to no, no, just no. to offset the song. Perfect. More <laughs> metal brook. Here you go. <laughs> Yeah. 
Hi. We're Witherer. Hi, Witherer. And we're addicted to metal on the Metal Experience. This is Justin. This is Dustin. Dustin's J and D of the so-called Saints. Or so-called Saints. Tell your boys. Or smell your boys. You're listening to the Netflix Boom. just heard on the road ahead and the struggle and that was a struggle Ooh, uh, for you to remember what those well, two songs were <laughs> those two songs were completely different in every <laughs> single way on purpose <laughs> um blame the least singer for you're that. telling that me great. that you didn't want to show your mom the struggle with your pretty singing yeah, voice uh, she's nice. she's actually heard the struggle now that i think about it because one year for my birthday we did a in a complete a little a completely acoustic show uh, we played four songs um, that we have acoustic versions for, and Struggle was one of them. And what'd she say? I don't remember. I don't, I don't think she was there. She was there. No. She was there. I remember was she was, was there. she there for the performance? She was there. I think she, she, she saw the Struggle, and then she kind of went out to do her own thing. Mm. <laughs> That's a nice song. But the struggle, struggle was the last song we played, though. <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> man. But I know she's heard it. Mm. Anyway. Well, that, that's good. That was a... Um, mm. Very interesting set of songs. Thank you. <laughs> well, very emotionally driven. Yeah, yes. it was. <laughs> Definitely was. Yep. Two very completely polar completely opposite. different songs on opposite ends of the emotional spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> I liked them. Sure Thank you. And your right. singing. Thank you. Your singing is beautiful. It, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Smoke, we smoking for three years kind of <laughs> fucked that up, but <laughs> <laughs> there's <laughs> always the time to stop. Yes, yeah, there is a time to stop, um, and it's not now. <laughs> I want to speak for yourself, after Greg. This pack. I will speak for myself, woman. <laughs> All right. Well, Luco's not here to do his thing, Man, so we're going to do his guy. thing for him. Man, here he is go. just getting the worst right he now. Is. Yeah, he, <laughs> he is. A piece of here shit. we go. <laughs> now it's time for. Hey, man, look what I found! Only on the Metal Experience. Woo. All right. Well, you heard it. This is Hey, Look What I Found, Luco's original segment. And this is brought to you by our friends at Imprint Recordings. Your music, your imprint. And you can visit imprintrecordings.com for more information for all your recording needs. Hell yeah. Uh, this week, we're featuring our second of three winners from the latest Reverb Nation contest that we ran back in March. Uh, this week, we are featuring Once Around. They're from Los Angeles, and we're going to hear their song, Ghost. Woo! Woo! Like the band ghost? Or? No, <laughs> no, like the song like ghost. A, like a spooky ghost. <laughs> like a spooky ghost. Spooky yeah, spooky ghost. Yeah, it Ooh. It better be good. Alone, 
Hey yo, it's Troy Adams from the podcast Wrestling Society. Every single Wrestling Wednesday, we bring you brand new episodes where we review the best and worst of professional wrestling eras of the past, as well as the biggest current events in professional wrestling and mixed martial arts. Search for us on YouTube, where we have hilarious WWE Network watch-alongs, reviews of terrible shows, and other great content. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at PodRest Society, and we're available on all podcast platforms. Come join the Society. This is Holden Zacharias. And this is Matt Powers. We're in Flesh Burr, and you're listening to The Metal Experience. And now a word from D. Reitz of One Steel Wound. Spoken poetry for the metal experience. Eat my cock, eat my cock. Don't spit on it, that ain't classy. Eat my cock, oh won't you eat my cock. No handies, let's get nasty. Eat my ass, eat my ass. Stir it with your hands. Eat my ass, eat my ass. Spread brown, take me to class. You're listening to the metal experience. All right. Well, once again, the metal experience. That was the Hey Look What I Found pick of the week. Hell yeah. It was Once Around from Los Angeles, and that was the song Ghost. Check them out on Facebook. And I'm definitely going to check those guys out. All yeah. Of that so fun you said stuff their name is Ghost, right? No, they're called Once Around, and that was the song Ghost. And they were, once again, one of our Reverb Nation winners from March. So coming up, we'll have a written interview with them, and uh, oh. we'll also be uh. doing an album review shortly cool got to find time for all this but that was awesome hmm. all right we're still sitting here with metal brook there's still plenty of music to play we've got four tracks left for the night hell yeah, yeah. Um, hell yeah so just wondering where can everybody listen to darknesses on online and all that fun stuff we have it available for streaming on spotify, spotify. there is also a stream link uh, on the hominine records uh, yeah. youtube channel uh, you can also listen to it on Spotify and Amazon uh, Prime Music. Nice. We don't have it on iTunes, do we? I we, do. we do. We do. Yeah, this it uh, it puts it on iTunes. iTunes. Yeah. Uh, but by, by the way, he mentioned Hominine Records. Hominine Records is the independent label that we all kind of uh, 
are are under. They're they're a great bunch of guys. They've they've helped us with you know promote and you know get our uh, our merch and you know shows and stuff like that. So. And what merch do you have currently available for people? Current? Oh, we got a bunch of stuff. We have album. We have bracelets, shirts, stickers, patches. Dildos. Yeah, that's stuff. Oh, yeah. Rug and holders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you say dildos? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Greg needs something to keep his mouth <laughs> occupied. I need uh, <laughs> After so what we just heard. <laughs> <laughs> Who dildos? <laughs> <laughs> If you give us underwear, we'll sign it. You know. <laughs> there you go. Put, put Real a rock smiley stars. Face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. What about what about shows coming up? Is there anything currently booked? We have the we uh, 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 the name escapes me, um, but it Cairo is Ale House. It, it, uh, yeah, we are playing at the Cairo Ale House in June. West Chicago. No. June. Yeah, in West Chicago. June. Yes, sir. I know where that 22nd? is. 22nd? I believe so. Yes. I, I'd have to double check. <laughs> but yeah, so we have that show coming up. And then recently, um, one of the bands that we played with at our uh, our Farewell Oasis show, um, the Eldritch Grimoire, check those guys out on Facebook. Eldritch Grimoire. That's what I said. Grimoire. You, you said... You, you mixed up he some said consonants. It. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> Eldritch said it. Grimoire. Grimoire. They, um, they invited us to do a show at, um, what's that place called? <laughs> it's Somewhere. a place with a roof. I can't remember. <laughs> I cannot, for the life of me, remember right now. I'd have to, I'd have to break away and right. go. We'll find come back thing. to that, and yes. the information will be given soon. Mm. So yes. to keep on with the rest of darknesses, we're gonna. Play another couple tracks. Hell yeah. What do you want to play next? Uh, let's play You're the End of Me and you Carry pick. On. Ooh, Ooh two good Sounds ones. great. Mm-hmm. Here we go. More music your way.
expect that type of language at Denny's, but not here. Well, that's too freaking bad. You hear me? Because we're throwing it back to Morgan Luco on the Metal Experience. All right. Greg is done talking, so we are back with the Metal Experience. I am Morgan Danielle, Webmaster Greg. Webmaster. Co-host tonight. Uh, You tell him, Morgie. Yeah, we're back. Uh, (laughs) We're here with Metal Brook, and once again, that was two more songs off the album, Darkness Is... Uh, we heard Sorry. You're the End of Me was the first song and Carry On was the second one. Perfect. Look at that. I just had a pause and he knew what to do. Carry on, carry on. So what are these songs about? The entirety of Darkness is is just that. It pl- the, the album title is the concept of the song. Each song talks about a different darkness that people face. With Immortal, it was it was, you know, the darkness of of you know, being recognized and being, you know, important and leaving behind the legacy. With soldiers, it was, you know, the darkness of, of having to, to face, you know, daily struggles, whether you're military or you're just, you know, a, a pede- uh, not pedestrian, but a civilian. With um, On the Road Ahead, it was mostly about, like... Being a pedestrian is kind of a problem these days, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always in the way. God <laughs> damn, they need to stop but skateboarding on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> No, but On the Road Ahead was mostly about, um, it was funny because I was thinking of something like, really something really dark and just something like doomy or stuff. It was mostly just about like overcoming or fighting something that you know you're about to lose. Like you're just walking in like, yep, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter what you do, no matter what you say, it's just going to end up you either just 
dying. That's yeah, it. Failing basically. Oh, yeah, Angelo. Um yeah. with some of the other songs with the struggle. The struggle is the uh I guess you could call it the I'm sorry song. You know, <laughs> cuz that was that was written when I was feeling uh, I was in my feelings and mm-hmm. I wrote an I'm sorry song with for whoever I was with at the time. I don't really remember. But I guess the darkness for that one is just um looking at yourself and and really realizing like oh my god i'm i'm a shit person you know um with you're the end of me it was the opposite of what struggle is and you're the end of me was the fuck you song (laughs) (laughs) hell yeah that's that's what that song talks about is just you know the darkness of of having someone or something or a group of people you know that you just you just hate that you just you just you know need to 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 when someone Scream. really wrongs you, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. When someone really wrongs you, and you you just want you just want to hold a giant middle finger to them and just burn that bridge to the ground, exactly. Like, like Nickelback, <laughs> like Nickelback, <laughs> no yeah, like Nickelback, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell, you're I right, plead, right, I right, plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Um, <laughs> carry on right after that. Carry on talk talks bands. about um, <laughs> moving forward. The darkness of of moving forward from from like. Uh, a traumatic experience or like loss or or what have you so that's the darkness of that one and like you know i said earlier in the show with with um live my darker self and my dusk that it that is darkness in turned into a story mm-hmm. you know i i think that's i think that's every song right yeah yeah every song yeah, so the entirety much. like i said the entirety of the album is is just exploring different types of darknesses that people face each and every day and <clears throat> you know when when we were writing the songs we really wanted to incorporate you know that are you okay, are you okay? <laughs> I, ice cube was trying to assassinate me i'm good oh my see God. right now kratos facing you almost, you almost <laughs> lost a guy there <laughs> Oh. No, that ice cube like literally swan dive into my throat. <laughs> thank, thank God they melt. Yeah, right. Thank God they melt. Uh, oh God, I'm good. Kratos I'm facing his own darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. The darkness of ice. <laughs> but no, so conceptually, that's that's the entirety of darkness. Is is you know the the album title itself is is word for word darkness is dot 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 because every song presents its own darkness and that's kind of the I guess the wordplay that we went with as far as, you know, every song title and, and, and the content of each song, you know, darkness is each of these songs, you know, darkness is whatever you, you make it out to be. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Nice. Well, you had mentioned earlier in the show that you were, um, kind of working on new music and you were working on a song to be on the new album that was, oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> One of your first songs. When are you expecting maybe to have a second album ready? Ooh, second album is still a, a bit away. Right now, we're actually trying to focus on doing an EP. Yes, and I think that's where that song will be featured on. Mm-hmm. How many tracks are you thinking for the EP? Six. 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 He held up for four. your yeah. six. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna say know? six. It's <laughs> usually right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you guys have six songs written right now? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We nice. yeah we pretty much got them all down and ready to go right now it's just uh just time to hunker down and start getting work done <laughs> yeah we've we've already begun the recording process of uh, i've laid down pretty much the majority of my vocal tracks Coz is you know always he's always on point when it comes to recording so his all his drum tracks and and any like backing music like keys and and what have you those those are already done so mm-hmm. it really just falls on on these two to to you know throw their stuff on there yeah, and when i'm ready yeah <laughs> no, right. when i'm ready when i feel like it <laughs> no but i'll be ready to honestly <sighs> well, we're looking very forward to that is there a shift in um a shift in ideas for the songs. Like yeah, this uh, mm. it's gonna be different. You know, different tunings, different uh, different vibe. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, totally different. Uh, we're just like experimenting with something like uh, like excess tuning wise, and then just uh, a feel for like uh, a newer sound that we're trying to look for. Yeah, with with darkness is, you know, like like I mentioned earlier, you know, every every song is is a different genre of metal. You know. But well, with this, I'd say for like the most part, darkness is it's like most most of it's thrash metal, but you know a lot yeah. of it's. Uh, but that on the for, road ahead for, though. For the, I mean, <laughs> that struggle you got that. though. You got that. What metal is that? <laughs> That's your metal. Struggle, but no, <laughs> but no, there's 
there are things that set it apart, but for the most part, you know, we got a lot of thrashy songs on it and a lot of uh, traditional influences, uh, a lot of uh, bare, or not bare bones, like raw influences, mm-hmm. maybe yeah. bare bones influences, you know, that I'm going to go with that, bone. bare yeah. bones. So with this, with this Hell, EP, yeah. you know, and our experimentation with drop tuning, we're, we're, we drop tune to C, which is, is giving us a lower sound, and it's really, really starting to, to kind of push the music forward. So we're, we're starting to lean more towards like a metalcore sound, and we're really, we're really excited to be, to be working with it. You know, um, a lot of the new, newest material that we've written has been in Drop C, and we, we vibe with it every time we play it, and it's, it's just it's such an exciting time to, to really be taking this new step. You know, so we're 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 pretty stoked. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's there's good stuff it's coming. It's definitely gonna be more modern. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah, modern. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of like uh, our the the first album was all standard. Really. Yeah. <laughs> we were in standard that whole album. Yeah. It's just like trying to find those like specific root notes for each song that just kind of like oh this sounds good and then we should start rolling around with it and then just wow standard <laughs> holy crap <laughs> and yeah. then that's when the whole drop tuning starts coming in and then like you said it's more modernized yeah it's it's mm-hmm. definitely new territory for us hmm. but you know with with what we've come up so far just you know with with everyone's efforts we're 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 looking pretty good good to know. <laughs> Before we go into, once again, uh, your upcoming shows, we've got a few announcements um, before next week's episode. Um, starting with Mandatory Abortions is looking for a few vocalists. What? First, <laughs> first for an album. Uh, the music is recorded. They're having guest vocalists write and sing for one or two songs off the album. So, Greg, you should uh, hit them up. No, mandatory uh, Abortions! They are also no. looking for a permanent front person who would uh, be able to take over, but... Preferably Does he female. have to be a doctor? Uh, <laughs> preferably female. I guess a doctor's okay, but they <laughs> are open-minded. Well, wait, 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 wait. They have to be Mandatory a abortions. Yes, they have to be a doctor. To be a female doctor. If yes. Yes. Okay. As so they're a thrash a doctor, metal, old school, hardcore that band with a little bit of blues. The requirements wow. are uh, that <laughs> you must be able to make practice at least once a week in the shows that you agree to play. Wh- where's the practice at? Um, <laughs> I think they're in the city. Uh, they're off the pink line. Off the pink line. I guess that's ironic if they're no. looking for a female that vocalist. That is like the most like um, <laughs> yeah. catfish yeah. bait I ever heard of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> throw on a wig uh, and, a, and a doctor's coat awesome. and you're golden. Yeah! <laughs> all right. Well, settle down. Um, before <laughs> all went quiet, uh, have the second EP uh, available off of Hominin Records. Am I saying that right? Hominin? Hominin. 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 Tumera Divine is Tumera. available uh, yes. yeah, on uh, YouTube and all streaming services. So the check YouTube. out Before It All Went Quiet. Shh, Before It All Went Quiet. Shh. Shh. Our friends in Jungle Rat are going on tour with the Absence and uh, Origin and Deicide, Deicide for the Overtures of Blasphemy North American Tour is starting we'll the uh, on the 11th. And they are going to be playing Reggie's May twenty third. That was that was the band I, I oh. was talking. I was Deicide. To think. Yeah, Deicide. I was like, why did I say Deicide? Playing side? earlier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Deicide's the shit. All yes. good. Read on, Morgie Moore. I am. Uh, the <laughs> Illinois Death Militia presents Summer Massacre two. Oh. And there's a bunch of awesome bands playing this. Uh, so oh, I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna name some of these bands. They're gonna be playing Livewire on June 29th to mark your calendars now. Um, having kittens. Murder Complex, Bray Road, Necro Cannibal Ass Grinder. (laughs) 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 They're from Illinois. We should talk to them. Uh, Face the Wheel, (laughs) Menstrual Munchies from Ohio. Menstrual (laughs) Munchies. Wow. (laughs) Damn. So some of these names I'm getting familiar with. Okay, read on. Uh, Summon the Destroyer, Mutilated by Zombies, Legion, and Sexual Atrocities. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's Just your favorite? There's name? a lot of brutality going on <laughs> June 29th at Livewire, so be sure to go to Summer Massacre 2. Oh, wait, wait I have a question about I don't some have of those answers. Names. Nope. <laughs> um, our friends in Full Metal Militia just posted an awesome video interview with Dan Watson from Enterprise Earth. And that is on their YouTube channel, also on their Facebook page. The so you should check them out. Yes. And uh, check out Full Metal Media. That is Sean McClellan. He used to be one of our writers. Hell yeah, awesome Sean. Media stuff still in the metal scene. So go support them. They are awesome. Yes. Yeah, um, our friends in Wrath are going to be opening Wrath. up for 
ex Iron Maiden vocalist Blaze Bailey at Brower House that mm. is going to be tomorrow, tomorrow Blaise, night. Blaze Bailey. That's uh, I don't even know what the date is. The eighth, yeah. Uh, that's a free meet and greet also oh. with the vocalist um, nice. in Lombard at Brower House. So check that out if you're Brower interested. House. Uh, shout out to our friends in Small Town Mentality. They are Small Town uh, Mentality. celebrating their hundredth episode this coming Friday, May tenth. So you can check out Small Town Mentality on iTunes on their Facebook page. See all the other links there. They have their show up. Um, but 100 episodes, that's badass. Good job, guys. Congratulations. That takes a lot to get there. Um, our friends in Hemi have a, Hemi. a brand new single, Avalon Averted, and it's a Fixer version, the track that was off of um, a Fixer remix that they did. So that should be cool. I think it's going to be in one of the films that their friend's producing. No way. Sweet. Our friends in Vicious Attack are going to be opening up for the convalescence happening at Live Our Lounge May 19th next week. Mm. Uh, they're going to be playing with Jury of Fears and Adrift on River. Adrift on River. St- I don't even know. Sounds Sticks. badass. Anyway. It's the drift. Uh, check that out. That's Adrift awesome. Adrift on River. Um, also, Sticks. check out the Evil Dentist in Extraction Point. <laughs> they're going to be <laughs> delivering. <laughs> All the brutality and cavities to your mouths. Who's ready for a root canal? <laughs> July 19th. <laughs> Get ready. Ooh, ooh, we'll be wow. at uh, Fitz and Spare Keys in, the mouth. <laughs> in Elmhurst. Uh, we're sponsoring that show. I am the MC. Blank Standard. Wow. Luco's Band Architects of Ruin playing with Atlanta is Burning. So uh, Atlanta is Burning going to be there? Atlanta is Burning. Gee it's golly, Batman. There. So uh, make sure you have your insurance card ready. <laughs> um, this could be a very spent. costly experience even though it says five dollars it could be brutal and you may need to have a tooth extract <laughs> so uh extraction point headline album release show purification oh through hatred God. just a big drill make sure you just up. hate on the dentistry <laughs> i hate the dentist honestly I despise for them. all your dental needs oh. um and <laughs> we're excited to finally announce this week we are part of feels fest um we were getting all this information last week when we were um, interviewing McKenna. So finally released this past Friday, Feels Fest 2019 is happening July 27th at Wire in Berwyn. No way. Uh, $10 at in Wire? advance at Wire. Uh, we are sponsoring Berwyn. it. It's with Arabella speaking with ghosts when we was kids, Guardrail, Capital Vices, Novial, Havens, and Glory Days. All no the bands way. are transforming into artists. They're all doing covers. Um Wait, they're transforming? Well, they're transforming. They're doing Robots different covers. So disguise. they'll be everything from Fall Out Boy, Attack Attack, Silver Scene, Taking Back oh. Sunday. Um, so each band is going to do an awesome cover. Uh, I can't give away too much as to what who's doing what. I know Spoilers. I can't yeah, do spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's going to be awesome. We'll have a table set up at um, both the Extraction Point Dentist Fest and at Feels Fest. Hmm. We'll have a table set up with uh, free swag that you can pick up oh, and uh, oh maybe some shirts you can buy. But we do have a ton of stuff we have to give away. So make sure you stop by, grab a bunch of stuff, say hi. And uh, we've got everything from CDs, stickers, shirts, um, Pins, patches. I don't even know what we have anymore. We have shirts. Some underwear. We have shirts. Socks. You know, we had a band give us thongs, and I think we're out. We might have a few <laughs> left. I don't even know. At least those bands have, have like bands really forever. decent names in the, like, the other like death metal bands. I'm like, wait, what? Excuse me? Mandatory abortion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I knew about them. I had no idea about the menstrual whatever they were called. <laughs> <laughs> menstrual anxieties? What was that? Oh, menstrual something. Like yeah, I need to look this up again. I don't was know. Was it menstrual soup? Like, hey, menstrual munchies. <laughs> menstrual <laughs> munchies. <laughs> and I'm going to go off on a limb here and say I've heard some pretty disgusting things recently about some um, weird countries mm. doing, I, I know menstrual this is probably munchies. TMI, people drinking menstrual water to get oh. high really? off of you like soaking tampons in water. Okay, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe that's where they got the name, <laughs> oh. but I don't know. I'm thinking about hitting them up and asking There's them. Have you tried that? Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> no, no. Have you if you're a female that? and you see that, you would not drink that. No. <laughs> Thanks. No. I'm good. It's like, hey, do you want to go see a band called Sperm Swamp? I feel <laughs> sick now. I mean, I've yeah. seen a band called Maggot Twat, so yeah. Sperm Swamp. Um, I'd go see a sperm, whatever the fuck you just said. <laughs> um, she likes the sperm. Swamp. So those are my announcements for for this week. We're having uh, Consume the Divide back on with us. Oh next hell week. no, really? I th- all twenty of those guys. Think 
I think it's like their <laughs> fourth time 20. on. I've got to look. Maybe it's their third time. Like a mariachi band? We've <laughs> uh, <laughs> had them on quite a few times. So it's about time that we caught up with them. I have offered to play their triangle in the band. I didn't know they had a triangle. They, I'm their triangle player, but I haven't really started yet. I you haven't practiced? Is it electric? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, it just means acoustics. Greg gets to hit something. Uh, uh, acoustics so, triangles. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and once again, the shows that you guys have coming up, we have all those details now? Yes. yes. Okay, oh, cool. Uh, uh, shoot. First show. Sunday, June 23rd, we play at the Cairo Ale House for Summer, Summer Mania Round 2. Cairo. Where was Round 1? What? Where was Round 1? Oasis. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Oasis. Okay. Mm-hmm. If anything, it was Oasis. If Angel booked us, then it was Oasis. <laughs> no okay. Way. But yeah, and the second show that we have coming up, uh, we're just waiting on the details and the final lineup, is um, again at the Cairo Ale House on August 2nd. We'll be playing with our friends in the Eldritch Grimoire. Mm. Sounds Grimoire. like a fairy tale. I'm still going to mispronounce that name. It's, we're, I guess it's, it's, a, it's a show for... Um, the Press dude's cancer. birthday. No, not that. <laughs> that would be that would be cool though. But no, uh, I guess the lead singer, um, William something or other, he he hit me up and he's like, "Hey man, you know we're playing a show and I'm getting a bunch of metal bands together. You know, it's for my birthday. Do you guys would be down? I'm like, fuck yeah, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah. So those two shows coming up. So. Yeah. So so for Summer Mania round two, we're also going to be playing with uh, some bands that we have played with before. This includes, but not limited to, Stay Up All Night and Fight. Yep. Uh, motion Picture Mindset. Yep. Frequencies. Yep. And Deadbeat, I believe. I yep. believe Deadbeat's on the. Yeah. Word. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then where can everybody find you guys online? Give you a like and listen to Darknesses. Everywhere. You want to come? Find us on Facebook at mm-hmm. Metalbrook Official. All that's all one word because you know URLs. So Facebook.com forward slash Metalbrook Official. You can find us on Instagram at Metal underscore Brook. Mm. Find, Metal you can find us on Twitter under the same name, the same handle, and yep. uh, you can uh, find us on YouTube as just Metalbrook on yep. the WW. The WW. I like how you use the word handle. Not a lot of people use the word handle anymore. He's the smart one in, yes. in the group. Yeah. We, we, nice. Which is why we let nice. him handle a lot of the technical stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sure you're right. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we've got two songs to listen Woo! to. The end of <laughs> Hearing Darkness is, is full tonight. Uh, oh, what are the last yeah. two tracks that we're going to hear? The first one is Relapse. Relapse. And the second one and final track, the the almost title track, I wouldn't say. I would say it almost. is the, the title album track. is My Dusk Part Two. Oh, prepare for yourself for this one, guys. Of the uh, <laughs> Darkness trilogy. So Relapse and My Dusk. If, if you're doing taxes, just do it right now. This is gonna be a long one. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late to do your taxes. Yeah, you, you can't do that Tax until season. next year, unless you're ahead of yourself. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I pay all my taxes 10 years in advance, so I'm good. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Well, thank you guys so much for driving down and hanging out with us tonight. No problem. Thanks again for having us. Check out Metal Brook, listen to their album, and go stream it. Give them a like on Facebook. And we will see you back at Fits of Spare Keys next week with a new episode with Consume the Divide. Consume the Divide. Good night. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Good Good night.
Go show you 